Hi, welcome to Air Engine Research. Today I'm going to do something a little different than usual. I'm not going to show any videos of things that I've been working on. I want to do a comparison of compressed air versus steam for possible use on a vehicle. I had a comment recently that they thought the steam engine would be more efficient and better to use than the compressed air. So I want to do a little bit of talk and show you some calculations on that. But first, any of you that are new subscribers or new to the Air Engine Research videos, you'll find them on YouTube under Air Engine Research. <clears throat> I have quite a few videos that you can look at there and see what progress I've made and where I'm at right now with it. Uh, but like I said, today I want to do a comparison. So I'll start first with my air engine. Uh, both of them are going to need some kind of a fuel. And the air engine is just compressed air. It will need a carbon fiber tank in order to hold the pressure needed to give the amount of air to go any distance. Now, it will also require a regulator to control the air from high pressure to low and an air control valve to determine how fast the engine runs. <clears throat> now, my air engine has three cylinders. It has an oval ring and it has a base plate and a drive shaft with a double rotor camshaft in the center. Now the engine does not need any batteries or oil or water. It has all sealed bearings so it doesn't require any lubrication. <clears throat> And if need be for working on any of the parts on the engine, each cylinder can be removed by just taking four bolts off and either replace the whole thing or repair it. And it's all open to be able to access all the parts easily. If you care to go to Air Engine Research on YouTube, you'll be able to see what the engine looks like and how it runs and how it sounds. Now the, the high pressure tank that is required is a carbon fiber tank which can hold up to 5,000 PSI and it costs roughly between four and six thousand dollars. So that's the major cost for the engine. <clears throat> now all the components and parts that are on the engine I made myself. Uh, I bought supplies locally from the machine shop or from the hardware store and I ordered some maybe some valves and things through through the internet. Now I'm not an engineer or a machinist but I bought a combination drill and uh, turning lathe some 13 years ago and started learning how to to use it and make parts. Needless to say I ruined several turning tools and a few end mills before I kind of learned how to use it. Now one of the major advantages of a compressed air engine is it's ready to run right now when you push the gas feed or accelerator to make it go. Now let's look at uh, say what a steam engine would require. <clears throat> now I did think about like I said, but it just was too many variables that I didn't think would be worth working on. Now it also has to have a fuel and a fuel tank, which is water. And besides that, it has to have a, it's the boiler is still going to have to have the uh, steam engine itself. And I'm sure both of those together is going to be quite heavy a firebox or a fuel burner to heat the water to steam pressure. Now if a firebox is used then you're going to have to have a container that 
would hold the, the fuel that you're going to burn. But if it's a uh, gas burner type thing, it's either going to be a gas tank or you'll have to have a, a box to keep the other fuel type things. Uh, now getting the water to boil doesn't happen instantly either, so if you want to use it, then you're going to have to go start a fire, wait till the water gets boiling and produces whatever steam pressure it's supposed to before you can even move it. And it does take a lot of heat to boil water. So if you have this firebox or burner inside the vehicle, it's going to be producing quite a bit of heat, which could make it quite uncomfortable. Now, I don't know what the overall design would be the most efficient, but it could be either a turbine, it could be a, a rotary uh, compressor vane type, or it also could just be a piston type. But that's something that they would have to figure out. Now I've done some calculations on steam and a comparison with what my air compressor motor would theoretically use. So why don't we go take a look at that. Over on the left, you'll see the diagram for my compressed air motor. Uh, it's going to be running, well, the sheet shows 200, but I'm going to base it on using 300 PSI, and instead of the <clears throat> 175 miles it could go, I'm going to base it on 116 miles. With the, with the steam calculations. So if you use a compressed air tank, which would be a 24 inch by 48 inch at 5,000, running pressure would be at 300 PSI. That would give me a total of 361,728 cubic inches of air to use to go 116 miles. Now, uh, calculating the water and all, one liter of water, its steam would equal 1,700 liters of steam at 14 PSI, which is atmospheric pressure. One liter is equal to 61 cubic inches, and one atmosphere is 14.7 pounds. So to convert that PSI and stuff to 300, you would divide it by 14.7, which would be 20 atmospheres. So those 1,700 earlier liters divided by 20 would only be 85 liters now at 300 PSI. And 85 liters times 61 cubic inches per liter would give you 5,185 cubic inches of steam to use in an engine. Now, earlier it was 361, 728. So if you divide that by 5,185, that is 69.7 liters. You convert those liters into gallons of water to use would be 18 gallons. Water weighs eight and a half pounds per gallon, so that would equal 153 pounds of water. And those 18 gallons of water needed would be for 116 miles. Now, I guess it is feasible to use that amount of water to go that distance, but I just thought all the other things involved would be more than what would be feasible in just a regular vehicle. 
I want to make it so that I can just take the engine out, stick this engine in, put a tank in the back, hook it up, push on the feed, and away you go. That's my idea, and we'll see how that goes in the future. But thanks for looking at the video, and I hope I gave you a little bit of insight as to the difference between the two compressed air versus water and steam. So once again, if you care to subscribe, go to Air Engine Research on YouTube and click on the subscribe. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you think I'm doing anything worthwhile. Until next time.